A soggy night for baseball, but no matter to Robin Young, his Hall of Fame statue outside Miller Park. He turned a trick Ryan Braun would like to do later on tonight. It's the Reds and the Brewers game two of their three game series in their Central Division showdown. It's going to be Marco Estrada and Mike Leak out on the mound tonight. Marco Estrada making his third spot start for the crew and has done very well in that role. Leak 3 0 despite a high ERA because he's getting eight and a half runs of support per ball game. Well, welcome back to the broadcast here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Dave and Craig back aboard with you here. And of course, the Reds beat the Brewers last night, so a loss for Milwaukee, but in more ways than one, Davey, because they lose Casey McGee for the night sprained his thumb on the final play of the game last night yeah it, it is a good law uh, not a very good loss because he's been so hot and he's swinging a good bat he said he could play but ron renegade rather him not play just so he can rest and be ready for tomorrow also ahead the braun identity ba and rock talk brewers history plus late breaking news on corey hart and eric el monte's roster status for tonight's game. Stay with us on Fox Sports Wisconsin. By Triple Hop Brewed Miller Lite, Taste Greatness. By AT&T. And brought to you by Toyota, proud sponsor of the Milwaukee Brewers and the Toyota Territory at Miller Park. And another great crowd filing in Miller Park on a Tuesday night for baseball. And Ryan Braun, he is on the doorstep of a milestone in franchise history. Reached base safely at all 22 that he's played in. And breaking news, just moments ago, Corey Hart activated. He was not supposed to be activated until tomorrow. Eric Almonte suffered a concussion. Hart is back on the active roster. We'll see if he gets some action here tonight. Hi, everybody. Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. And before we get into Ryan Braun, uh, Braun, let's quickly talk about Corey Hart and what that means to the roster currently for Ron Renneke. It's always nice to have a two-time All-Star, a guy that's had 30 home runs and 100 RBIs. And, uh, you know, the Brewers were forced to put him on today because had they not, they would have only had two players on the bench. You can't get through a game with two players. So Eric Almonte on the Seven-day disabled list has something new in spring training this year. He's going to have to prove that he's back and okay before he's able to come off. So 
Big news here at the ballpark already. Yeah, and it just went down. Almonte was hit during batting practice uh, right in the forehead. So he's out. Hart is in. Let's get back to Ryan Braun, who is one game away of reaching base, of matching Robin Young's franchise record of 23 consecutive. What a start. Yeah, I, I shake my head because this guy has been unbelievable so far this year. He's hitting the long ball. He's hitting the ball line to line. He's drawing his walks. 22 consecutive games he's reached base safely and look how many times he has been on it's 47 times but not to be undone and Robin Yao back in 83 coming off his MVP season with the Brewers look at Taito 23 games in a row 34 hits 12 walks it's always good I don't care who you are Ryan Braun to be compared to that guy Robin Yao yeah you always want to be on a graphic with Robin Yao Braun is certainly trending that way well, the Brewers have lost four straight to the Cincinnati Reds. They've lost eight of their last ten. It is time to buck the trend. Game two, the Brewers and the Reds coming up next on Fox Sports Wisconsin. And so much for Corey Hart getting his feet wet for a day in the major leagues just activated moments ago as Eric Almonte was injured during batting practice and we were all down there when it happened it was really bad he took one right in the forehead on a throw from second base and the breaking news as we get started play today there's Dusty Baker and the Reds they have had their way with Milwaukee they have won four in a row this year. Yesterday the Reds winning nine to five behind Bronson Arroyo and here is the batting order for Dusty Baker brought to you by Piggly Wiggly. It's Drew Stubbs, Jay Bruce and Joey Votto at the top. Brandon Phillips, Edgar Renteria and Jeremy Hermita in the middle. Ramon Hernandez, Paul Yanish and Mike Leake rounded out and that lineup will face 
Marco Estrada on the mound for the Brewers. He has filled in nicely for the injured Zach Grinke. Yep, fifth appearance, third start. He last appeared out of the bullpen against the Astros, a scoreless inning. But his last start, a very good one. One run in six innings and a no decision against Washington. Brewers need a big start from Marco Estrada here tonight. Looking for their first win against the Reds. The crew chief, Tim Cheetah, is behind the plate calling the balls and strikes. Jeff Nelson, Marty Foster, and Bill Welke on the bases. Drew Stubbs leads off for Cincinnati. Had a big night last night. Had three hits in five at bats. He scored twice. He stole two bases. Well, you figured Cincinnati, who arrived in the wee hours Monday morning after a Sunday night game in St. Louis. You figure they might be a little sluggish last night, but that wasn't the case. Nine runs on 12 hits, and Arroyo pitched very well as they picked up their fourth consecutive win this season against Milwaukee. It was only a uh, third inning that did the Brewers in, and Chris Narvison, six runs on eight hits in the third inning for Cincinnati. Other than that, they were pretty well shut down last night. Two balls, two strikes. Stubbs swings and misses. Estrada dialing up the fastball here tonight. That is something we have not seen. Boy, 95, it says out on the, <laughs> the speed pitch out on the scoreboard. And check it out, Estrada, known for the changeup, but getting it up there pretty good. Here's how the Brewers line up defensively behind Estrada with Braun Gomez and Katze in the outfield. The infield is Council at third for the injured Casey McGee. With Betancourt and Weeks up the middle. Fielder gets the call at first. And Lucroy behind the plate. The Blaine's Farm and Fleet defense. Shift is on for Jay Bruce. Bruce homered here last night. Had a two run home run in the third inning. He was part of that six run eight hit inning. We later found out that Chris Narvison was pitching sick last night. And lasted only two and a third, and it makes sense when you start to miss up in the strike zone. Fatigue has to be a part of that. That's the first sign, and Noah guy's uh, out of sorts. You know, a little fatigue in the legs, and pitches up in the strike zone, and that was the problem for Chris in that start last night against Cincinnati. Really, only the bad first bad start he's had this year. Shortest start of the year. For Milwaukee. Well, last night against Narvison, Bruce got one up on the zone and he did not miss it. A two run homer at the time made it three to nothing. Fast start for the Cincinnati Reds. Bruce's third home run of the year, now 10 runs batted in as he draws the walk. How about a scouting report on Marco Estrada tonight? It's from his battery mate, Jonathan Lucroy. Well, I think primarily he needs those strikes, keep the ball down. He has a very good changeup, and we're going to mix that in as well. You know, also with some, uh, you know, with some other pitches like his, uh, his uh, cutter and his curveball. So, you know, they're all pretty good pitches, but his changeup's really good. So we're going to use that a lot, I think. And uh, you know, he spots his fastball up and keeps that changeup down and locates the right spot. I think we're probably going to be successful. So we'll see what happens. That's the game plan from the 24-year-old catcher Jonathan Lucroy. There's another big fastball from Estrada, who is. Consistently in the mid 90s to get this day started. Yeah, he's cranked up. And you know, the scouting report on Estrada in that Cincinnati clubhouse is he's got a good changeup. So, what he's doing, he's coming out, throwing the fastball. And it seems to be surprising the Reds, at least early on. A strikeout and a walk. And the reigning MVP at the plate, Joey Votto. Well, we mentioned Casey McGee. He is. Not going on the disabled list. It looks like a day to day injury collided with Joey Votto last night, the final out of the game last night. But Casey McGee is only available to pinch hit tonight, and Ron Rinicky would love not to use him at all, which really pressed the decision to activate Corey Hart and put uh, Eric Almonte on the new seven day disabled list, the new concussion rule in Major League Baseball, which we'll get into. As the broadcast continues, chance for two here. Betancourt will take it himself. And a 6 3 double play and a good start for Estrada. Here come the Brewers. Weeks, Council, and Braun.
Just underway from the beautiful Dome Stadium, the retractable roof. There is Ron Renneke. And here is the starting lineup he'll send out there tonight against Mike Leake. Brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, Ricky Weeks, Craig Council, and Ryan Braun. Braun trying to extend a 10-game hitting streak along with a 22-game on base streak. Fielder Katze and Betancourt in the middle with Lucroy, Gomez, and Estrada rounding it out. And right-hander Mike Leake is on the mound. He is a perfect 3-0 to start the season. Yeah, fifth start tonight is ERA just under five, but that's because of one bad start. His second start of the year gave up six runs in four and a third. But other than that, he has been very good. 3-0. He's allowed two home runs, only 20 hits in 23 and two-thirds innings. 23-year-old Mike Leake. Fifth appearance of the season, his first career appearance against Milwaukee. Had a good season last season to begin the year, then was uh, bitten by the injury bug a season ago. Leak has been in the headlines lately for an off field incident, a shoplifting charge against him. As Weeks, a high chopper, this is Renteria. And a good throw to get the out. Weeks is retired. Check the rest of that Cincinnati Reds defense. Jeremy Hermida gets the call and left today for Gomes. Drew Stubbs and Jay Bruce join him. The infield is Giannis at third, Renteria at short, with Phillips and Votto on the right side. Ramon Hernandez catches his first game of the series, matching up with Mike Leake. A hat full of rosin, Mike Leake. And a command specialist. He is Cincinnati's version of. Sean Markham with the Brewers, you could say. Doesn't have the overpowering stuff, but has great command of everything. And trying to follow in the footsteps of that guy who went six and a third last night. Bronson Arroyo picking up his third win of the season. Not sure what it is about this Cincinnati Reds team against the Brewers, but they have been dominating Milwaukee for a while now. They won 19 in the last 22 games that these two teams have played. Hard to explain. Craig Council in the two hole tonight for Ron Rinicky and uh, had an explanation to why, even though Gomez is in the lineup, left handers have more success against Leak than right handers. So it's not just Council in the two hole, but he has Kate hitting behind fielder as well. As Council is rung up, a called strike three, two outs. Our Nissan keys tonight on Mike Leak from Brewers hitting coach Dale Swain. Keeping the ball down exceptionally well in and out uh, to both left handers and right handers using his cutter which he changed speeds on sinks the ball um, mixes in some change ups to righties and uh, uses a little more to lefties once in a while throw a curveball uh, not not a pitch that he wants to get beat on he's going to stick basically with his with his uh, cutter and, and uh, sinker he just he's been in, incredible lately uh, just keeping the ball down doesn't sound good does it that is a massive scouting report and certainly <laughs> he's something due. that uh, the he's Brewers due. He's heard. due to yes. give, give up some runs. I mean, the game's not that easy. Well, he pitches with an ERA near five coming in, but he's he's been a winner. He has won three of his four starts this year. And when you get Ryan Braun to look like that, that is a testament to his stuff. Yeah, his second start of the year at Arizona, he went four and two thirds, gave up six earned runs. Other than that, he's been very good. That will uh, beat up an ERA early in the year. One start like that. Quickly 0 and 2, and Braun almost hit by the pitch. A narrow miss. Oh and 2, not the worst thing to do is get hit. Just barely missed the shirt sleeve. Braun trying to extend a couple of streaks here tonight. Got a franchise record on the line. And it won't continue here in the first as Mike Leak mows him down one, two, three with a pair of K's in the first inning.
11 Chevrolet Cruise Traverse or Equinox and get two tickets to a future Brewers game. Visit Brewers.com for details. Well, the second to last game of this homestand. The Brewers will wrap up this series tomorrow against Cincinnati, a day game here at Miller Park. And then it's off on the road. The Brewers will have a team off day Thursday, and then they open up a series in Houston beginning Friday. Houston, Atlanta, and St. Louis, a three city road trip coming up, and 10 games total. Brandon Phillips will lead off for Cincinnati. Estrada. Has a good fastball tonight, something we have not seen from him, at least in the reaches of the mid 90s, where he has been in the early going. Estrada, 27 years of age. This is his fifth appearance and his third start of the season. He's done a terrific job. His first start of the year against the Braves, he gave up four runs. But in three games since, he's only given up one earned run. Twice out of the bullpen for Ron Renicki. There's a good changeup. And yeah, that changeup. That first start of the year against the Braves, he was one out away from a very good start. But Jason Hayward hit a three run home run off him with two outs in the sixth. Left the uh, game with the lead, however. You see Brandon Phillips way out in front of that changeup. We'll see what he does with him here. A ball and two strikes. And he lays off, does Phillips. Not too many second basemen hit cleanup. I mean, one of the one of the few. And the last start for Marco, very good as well against his old team in game two of that doubleheader. Out in front. Long throw for Council. Phillips can run and the throw just in time. As Brandon Phillips is cut down. Let's take you back to Estrada's last start against the Washington Nationals. Part of the doubleheader, and Estrada was very efficient in six innings against Washington. Gave up just one earned run and posted seven strikeouts. A career high for Marco Estrada. Yep, 96 pitches. Uh, through six innings, but the Brewers weren't able to get him much support. Brewers lost five to one that night. He's been a nice surprise. I mean, when you consider the number four and five spots in the rotation, what they have been able to do, eat up innings. To take away that start by Narvison yesterday, they've been very good. Edgar Renteria in the starting lineup tonight for Dusty Baker. Still at it. Renteria with the Giants last year. Part of that World Series team. And a good fit here in Cincinnati. He's not a guy you can play every day any longer. The Reds have a talented shortstop in Paul Yanish, who tonight is starting at third base. So a pretty good combination. Dusty Baker always likes to have that veteran influence in the infield. Last year it was Orlando Cabrera. That Alex Gonzalez before that. Yeah, they are uh, going to sorely miss Scott Rowland. He's got a shoulder issue, and you know, not just what he provides you on the field, but what he gives you off the field and leadership in that clubhouse. It's tough to do when you're on the disabled list. And those who follow the Reds are concerned that the injury might be severe for Rowland. It might be a while before he returns. They're not even contemplating a return date yet for Scott Rowland. At this point, they're trying to let the inflammation settle down in his shoulder so they can figure out what kind of damage is actually in that injured shoulder, which has been a chronic problem for him over the last three or four years. So, in the meantime, Dusty Baker is going to have to scramble at third base. Baker has Chris Valeka to use. Not quite the defender. That Janish and Renteria give him on the left side. Bouncing ball to Betancourt. Plenty of time with Renteria running and two gone as Estrada gets back to back ground ball outs. Well, 
No, not good news on the injury front once again for Ron Renicki with the uh, injury to Eric Almonte during batting practice. But one thing that it did do was avoid a decision with respect to the bullpen in the short term. They were going to have to send somebody in the bullpen down to the minor leagues when Corey Hart came off the DL tomorrow. That's not going to have to happen now. Now the consensus was that Renicki was going to drop his bullpen from eight pitchers to seven. As Hermita rolls one out to Betancourt, well positioned. And a three up, three down inning for Marco Estrada. The big man is coming up. Prince will lead off when we come back from Miller Park. No score as we head to the bottom of the second inning and we check our Powerball home run leaderboard. You see Braun leads the team and the league with eight home runs. Fielder sitting there with three. Cincinnati is the National League leader in home runs at this point. Yeah, Brewers right behind him at 24. Reds with 28 so far this season. Fielder to the opposite field. This one's got a chance. Back is... Hermita, it is gone. Fielder sends one out of here. Add one to it as Fielder belts his fourth. And it's one to nothing, Milwaukee in the second inning. Boy, the spray chart for Prince Fielder is a thing of beauty. All four of his home runs have come to the left side of center field. There's a sinker that was trying to get away from Prince. It was up in his own, and he let it get to him. And the big fella flexing his muscles, knocking it out of here. Off the Friday sign out there and left. Boy, he's strong. My goodness. It's only the third home run allowed by Mike Leak. With authority to the opposite field, Prince Fielders. Coxey fouls one back. And we were talking about Mike Leake and his success against right handed batters righties before tonight's game coming in hitting 170 off of Mike Leake left handers 308. So I guess giving Casey McGee the night off is not the worst thing in the world You get another left handed bat in the lineup with Craig Council. Three lefties in the lineup tonight fielder in Katze. Back to back in the lineup. Well, fielder hit that ball so hard it came back into play. You know, that wall behind the fence, the Friday's wall, is recessed about 10 to 12 feet. As Katze in the center field, right at Stubbs. And the first out. Well, Prince Fielder, you know he's locked in when he starts hitting home runs the other way. And most of his home runs have come 
to the opposite field, either center field, left center, or as in the case today, down the left field line. Yeah. Well, you could consider all of those to be opposite field shots, center field. That was dead center in Pittsburgh, and you have to be very strong to hit him out in center field in Pittsburgh on a cold, wet night. And that one to straight away left. I was saying about fielder, though, you know, you have to hit it with such force that it bounces off that back wall. You know you, that the player has hit it well when it comes back into play <laughs> because it has that kind of sting to it. Right. As opposed to disappearing behind the uh, yellow line, that wall there is set back from the fence. The ball somewhat disappears with all the lights in that left field fence, too. You kind of lose track of it. It's tough on a play by play guy. I would imagine it's tough on an umpire as well. <laughs> oh, them too. Yeah. More importantly, right? <laughs> I guess it depends on who you're talking to. Yeah, there's the difference between the wall and the fence. Yeah, players can walk back there and you know maybe grab a uh, cheese curd or two. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, the Trevor Hoffman secret pathway as Leak strikes out Betancourt for the second out of the inning. Third strikeout for Mike Leak. So Leak will face Jonathan Lucroy. A couple of young talents that figure to be matching up a great deal in this division over the years if they stay healthy. 24 year old catcher Jonathan Lucroy and the 23 year old pitcher Mike Leak. Lucroy put his time in in the minor leagues. Mike Leak did not. Straight to the big leagues out of the draft. And the inning is over as Lucroy flies out, but French Fielder delivers the game's first run. Opposite field home run, his fourth of the year. And it's one to nothing, Milwaukee. on top as we head to the top of the third inning and a reminder you can click on the fan zone tab on the Fox Sports Wisconsin.com homepage and win prizes in the new Fox Sports Wisconsin fan zone from team merchandise and game tickets unique fan experiences tech toys and more and if you're not a member join now fast and free and it's all at the fan zone tab on Fox Sports Wisconsin.com the fielder belts his fourth of the year. 23 runs batted in for Prince Fielder, the National League leader in RBIs to start play today. Matter of fact, the Brewers have the top two spots occupied in RBIs. Fielder and Braun. And now Estrada pitches with a lead. Ramon Hernandez leads off. 
In the air to right center, Gomez has it tracked. One pitch, one out for Estrada. Hey fans, collect the Brewers player profile poster every Friday in your Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. A different player will be featured every week, sponsored by Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin. Well, Estrada has given up just one walk. Wiped it out immediately with a double play off the bat of Joey Votto. So he has still faced the minimum. And facing Paul Yanish with one away in the third. Yanish is the everyday shortstop for Dusty Baker this year. Tonight makes his first start of the season at third base. And only the seventh start at third base in his career. It's going to be tough to replace Scott Rowland, and Dusty Baker is going to. Try and mix and match for as long as he can, depending on how long it's going to be for Roland. Little handle shot out to Weeks. Nice and easy. Two up, two down for Estrada. Got to be impressed with the way Luke Croy and Estrada are working the first part of this ball game, establishing fastball. Four seamers, two seamers. He threw a nice slider to Giannis on a 1 0 count. And he's been very uh, careful with the changeup. Hadn't thrown too many yet. We figure that second time through, you might break that out a little bit more. Keep it in your pocket till you need it. Once you get him looking fastball, that's when that changeup becomes very effective. The Reds have another good hitting pitcher at the plate tonight. Mike Leak, two hits in ten at bats this season. Not an automatic out at the plate. There's definitely a trend in the National League with pitchers. Able to swing the bats a lot better. There's a, a lot more attention focused on hitting. For example, the Brewers and Zach Greinke can't wait to get a bat in his hands. Before every home game, the Brewer pitchers take batting practice prior to the regulars BP session. And every day, it's a it's a long stretch of situational batting practice. It's not just go up there and right. see how far you can hit them. It's not a driving range early on. It's dropping down <laughs> the bunts and you know moving runners things like that. But they get their opportunity to lift and separate. Slow roller coming in as council and that is going to go as an infield hit for Mike Leak. It's going to be the first hit of the ball game on a swinging bunt out towards third base. The other thing you, you like to see, you know, from young pitchers these days is once they hit the baseball, they like to run. Some of these guys that we've seen so far this year, they get down the line in pretty good shape and leak. Sniffing base hit on that jam shot. He was getting down that line very well. Craig a little bit off balance, not able to hold on to it. But you like the hustle from the pitchers. So back to the top of the order. Here is Drew Stubbs in his second look at Estrada. He starts him with a breaking ball strike. He's got some good crispness to his pitches tonight. I mean, that's a good breaking ball right there. You know, late breaking, short and quick. It's the kind of breaking pitch that you want. You want those lazy breaking pitches that break early. Just missed inside. It's a dangerous bat here, Drew Stubbs. Dusty Baker told him that he's going to put him in the leadoff spot, but he doesn't want him to. Think like a leadoff hitter. He wants him to be himself. He wants him to continue to, to swing hard. He's got a lot of power. Aside from his great speed, he's one of the fastest players in the league. But he hits for some power as well. Now it's just a matter of whether Stubbs is going to be able to make enough contact at the top of the order. That's more of an on-base percentage type spot. 23 strikeouts already. For Stubbs, and this is Cincinnati's 24th game. Homer against Milwaukee in Cincinnati in that first series of the year. Two balls and two strikes, two outs in the inning. Stubbs had a good cut. As Cincinnati's has three hitters that have struck out 23 times this year already. Jay Bruce, Johnny Gomes, and Stubbs. Strikeouts are overrated, Rock. When you're hitting homers. Yeah. I guess. That wasn't what you were selling when you played? I tried to. 
<laughs> Nobody was buying. <laughs> Back inside, missed with a fastball. Yep. I mean, guys don't worry too much about strikeouts these days. I mean, it had a little bit different stigma attached to it back, you know, 15, 20 years ago. I mean, you have middle infielders striking out 100 times this, these days. Stubbs hit 22 home runs last year. And a swing and a miss. Down he goes. Estrada has punched him out twice. And three scoreless innings. We'll talk to the general manager, Doug Melvin, when we come back on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Wiggly in the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin by Ho Chunk Gaming Wisconsin, your ticket to more, and by Subway. Try our FoxSportsWisconsin.com. A live chat with Doug Melvin. And before he does that, we'll actually have a live chat with Doug Melvin. Because he's here in the booth with us. This is live. Chatting. This is live and you don't chatting. have to type anything in here. Okay. It's, this is not an electronic conversation. Okay. So uh, are you prepared for your uh, your live online chat? I assume this is the first for you. I'm more nervous about this next one than this inning here. <laughs> I guess you're going to check your typing skills, how fast you can fire out your <laughs> answers. Uh, no, we're looking forward to that. Thanks for uh, playing along with us, Fox Sports Wisconsin. We always enjoy catching up with Doug. And uh, he'll be available to you via the internet in one inning. We should start with Corey Hart. He was activated today before the game. And uh, we were all down there when it happened with, uh, with Eric Almonte hit in the head. With a thrown ball, and uh, he's on the disabled list, the new seven day concussion disabled list, and he's the first player to actually use that seven day deal. Can you just take us through the process of how that went down today? Yeah, I did not know that he was the first, but yeah, we were going to wait and activate Corey tomorrow. Uh, Nashville got rained out today. We're going to let him just take some BP, and then in, uh, during infield, uh, Eric took a ball thrown, I believe, from Craig Council right between the eyes, and uh, I didn't see it, but. I did see Eric later on in the training room, but what they do is they, the, our doctors, Dr. Needfeld, Roger Kaplinger, they get together and they do an, an evaluation, and then they got to have to get it approved from uh, Dr. Green of Major League Baseball, and they go through the symptoms and and that, and they have to sign off on it. So I think the five to it's about a five to seven day period that you you can possibly recover from it, and it may go beyond that at that point, beyond the seven days. But uh, you know, 
for right now we ended up having to put him on just prior to game time and and then activated Corey Hart. Well and that was uh, kind of you were forced to, to do that because if you had not done it then you only have two players on your bench you know Casey McGee's kind of banged up with that thumb. Can you talk a little bit about Casey and how he's doing. Yeah Casey I talked to Casey just prior to the game too and he's a little bit sore he said you know if it was later in the year he could play he said he could probably get his way through it but it makes more sense to to, to take the day off. Um, I probably could pinch hit if it came down to it but best to like Ricky the other day best to take a day off and hope he feels a little bit better tomorrow. Marco Estrada to center field Stubbs coming in can't get there. So the two pitchers tonight with base hits. Well, you got to feel good Doug. I mean your team's starting to come around getting healthy guys coming back. You got Corey back. You got Zach Greinke coming soon. Uh, Saito uh, you know Manny Parr those kind of guys so things are looking pretty good long term. Yeah Takashi Saito is going to go on a rehab assignment. And pitch one inning. We just got to make sure that he's able to push off the mound and be ready. And he's going on an assignment to Nashville. Niger Morgan's going Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Niger can be activated, uh, I believe, next Tuesday, and uh, and that, and then uh, Saito could be activated as soon as we see that he's completely healthy. So we are getting healthier. Corey coming back, Saito, Morgan, and then Zach Greinke's one more rehab start, and we'll evaluate that and hope that he's back, and then. Manny Parr is getting very close too. So, you know, they're they're five very important players to our ball club in the offseason. They were they were key people that were going to help us. And and I got to give credit to Ron, the coaching staff, and the players that have filled in because you know over the course of a year, it's never a 25-man roster. You have to convince players that it, it is a it's really a 35 to 40-man uh, operation when it comes to on the field, and you have to go through players and option them out and be ready in case of injuries. So. Um, you know we're at sitting at 500 you always want to be better but uh, in view of uh, the injuries we've had uh, we, we think that the, they've done a pretty good job and you know we're playing we're playing good baseball we've had our moments like any any team but uh, overall some of the things that we set out to do in the offseason was improve the pitching and the defense uh, and that mindset of pitching and defense I think is uh, has helped us to get to where we are we have seen a lot of shifting so far this year and what kind of conversations are going on between you and the front office members and the coaching staff about the shifting it has saved a lot of hits and a lot of runs so far this season it seems. Yeah well, Carl Mueller does our advance work and Scott Campbell and uh, they, they work with the advance work and they coordinate it with the coaches and they make recommendations and uh, you know you can shift and we've been shifting a lot you know I think the thing that's most unusual is shifting on right handed hitters mm -hmm. and, you know you see a lot of shifting with left handed hitters. And that, but we shift a lot even with right handers, and you can see balls going up the middle. And we keep track of how many runs we think that might have been saved or hits that might have been saved by the overshifting, and then we're on the plus side right now. Mm -hmm. There's occasionally the other day Cairo got jammed and hit a ball that would have been a routine pop up to Ricky, but uh, you know, you, you get you get to the point where you know you're going to win some and lose some, but in the end, we think the shifting has really helped. Our pitching staff and help their defense. The other thing that uh, you notice right away with the, the Ron Renneke managed ball club, the shifting is probably the most visible, but also the aggressive play that he spoke of during the offseason. And how have you seen that manifest itself so far this year? And are you pleased with the way the Brewers are running the bases? Yeah, I think you know shifting is is aggressive too. That's an aggressive approach to shift as much as we do. And uh, on on the bases, uh, obviously you'll make a few mistakes. Um, you might run through an Eddie Cedar hold up sign right <laughs> or you might hold up and he's waving you in those things could happen but, uh, and they have happened but overall if you have the aggressive mentality uh, Ron's philosophy is that you're going to you're going to end up again on the plus side there will be times that it doesn't work out but it's challenging outfielders arms in the game today we think the game's changed a little bit that outfielders don't aren't as accurate with their throws. There's right. still some outfielders that have good arm strength. Jay Bruce got a good arm. Stubbs has good arm. But you know you challenge the accuracy as much as you challenge the strength of the outfielders arms. Yeah you talk about challenges and you guys have some challenges ahead of you. You got some players coming off the disabled list and some tough decisions out in that bullpen and some of the guys are going to have to be sent out. Yeah they, they were tough. You know the catching decision the backup catching with George Gutierrez going out was a tough call but we'll have some tougher even tougher ones when it comes to the pitching coming up uh, out of the bullpen. Well Doug we appreciate your time. Good luck in your online chat. I'm look, looking forward to it. That's coming up FoxSportsWisconsin.com. You can go there now.
three said only one run on the board and it came off the bat of Prince Fielder belting his fourth home run of the season opposite field his 23rd RBI on the season and has been about Marco Estrada since then three innings pitch only one hit two strikeouts and B.A. over his last 11 innings he's only given up six hits and one earned run. He has been impressive for sure and he has filled in very well for Zach Greinke and certainly Rock Estrada knows the wolf is at the door here. I mean we just talked to Doug Melvin about all of the injuries and the players that are coming back and Estrada is hanging on for his major league life. That might right be now. why you might see some fastballs at 95 today. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do in uh, certain circumstances but he's throwing the baseball well. I need you to stay with me here the next couple of innings OK. I know Doug Melvin is involved in the online chat the live chat. But uh, you, you stick with me here for the game. That's at Fox Sports Wisconsin dot com. You can go there right now and uh, be a part of a live chat with Doug Melvin as opposed to every other night I take off on you. Is that uh, what you're I thought saying? You might spin around and get on your laptop and <laughs> have a few words. I got you. Bruce in the left field playable for Braun. One gone here in the fourth inning. Well, that leads us to our AT&T trivia tonight. Who was named most valuable player of the 2010 World Series last year's World Series. Who was the MVP of that World Series. He is in the ballpark tonight. We'll give you a hint. And it was an unlikely MVP. Yeah, and he uh, came up with some huge hits some home runs and. It was not his first World Series. Joey Votto is second turn against Estrada. Votto bounced into a 6-3 double play. That ended the first inning. He's off to a great start. Votto a 383 hitter to start the day. Four home runs, 12 RBIs. A 495 on base percentage currently. Then you have as close to a straight up shift as you could see they're giving Vado a lot of the line down the left field line. But not too much of a radical shift because he does hit the ball from line to line straight away in the outfield they've got. Betancourt shaded up the middle and counsel off the line. But that's not much of a shift. Not for the Brewers anyway. Vado begins the day third in the league in hitting. Matt Holiday of the Cardinals leads the league with a 400 batting average and then Matt Kemp of the Dodgers and then Joey Votto. Braun is on that list. He's fifth. Fielder is 10th. As Votto lays off a couple of tough pitches. That's a good eye. A tough pitch to lay off of on a 3 2 pitch. And Votto saw it all the way. It goes with a change up on three and two. You're going to get a lot of swings and misses on that pitch, but not with Joey Votto. Hey, the five county five day promotion is back for residents of Ozaki, Washington, Waukesha, Racine, and Milwaukee counties. You can purchase half price tickets and all reserve seats from May 9th through the 14th, except for the Miller Lite beer pen, all inclusive areas, and the $1 Euchre seats. Brandon Phillips with a runner on and a strike from Estrada. By the way that walk to Votto extends his on base streak to 24 games. He's been on in every game the Reds have played this year. Ryan Braun sitting on that 22 game on base streak. Robin Yount has the record at 23. Braun could match that tonight in franchise history. You could probably guess who has the record for the longest reaching base safely streak in Brewers history, just not to start the season. Paul Mauder's 39 game hitting streak. That's a good place to start. Part of that team streak in 1987 as Phillips takes a big hack. That was a season of streaks both for the good and the bad. Yeah. On the Bill Schroeder Brewers of 1987. Yeah. yeah won uh, the first 13 games in a row and after game 12 George Webb gave away free hamburgers. 
in May the Brewers we lost 12 straight. And when you know it George Webb wanted their hamburgers back. Just kidding. <laughs> That's always a big hit on the banquet tour. Yeah that is you know I didn't get many laughs about that. You didn't, that, uh, uh, up here. You didn't bring that with uh, the, the. Quite the level of enthusiasm that you typically do. Yeah. You know after a pass through the open bar. Yeah. On the banquet circuit. <laughs> People laugh at anything when they uh, pass <laughs> through the bar. <laughs> I love you man. <laughs> My favorite brewer. <laughs> you do that well. <laughs> well, Estrada staying inside on Phillips. Stays at a ball and two strikes. Now, you know it's time to shut it down when Rock gets the Gorman Thomas autographed baseball cards. Mr. Thomas, will you sign my card? Yeah, they uh, yell yell that at me on my way down to the instructional once in a while. <laughs> Turn my head and give him a dirty look. He's been completely insulted. <laughs> Runner goes and a high fly ball left field. Braun back at the wall. And it is gone. Brandon Phillips just reaches out and serves one over the wall in left field. Yep, change up. He went down and got it. Uh, he has been swinging the bat very well for the Cincinnati Reds. Brewer saw him in first three games of the season. He was not swinging it well, but right now that's a tough pitch to hit out of the ballpark. Watch the back knee for Phillips. Point of contact. That back knee ends up on the ground. He went down and got it, leveled his swing out. And you're not going to see too many swings like that result in home runs. That's when you know you're going well. Phillips is squaring up everything right now. An unlikely two run home run. Don't take that finish to the Little League, but it counts. And it gives the Reds the lead here in the fourth inning. Renteria tied up. Did he go? Yes, he did, says Jeff Nelson. No balls and two strikes. That is a big league hitter right there. Brandon Phillips, an all-star last year. I don't know why he's hitting cleanup. And second baseman hitting cleanup. Not too many that do that. Both Estrada and Lucroy wanted that 0-2 slider. Didn't get the call. Here's Betancourt. And the second out of the inning. There's Doug working away on the chat. Electronic communication in the fourth and fifth inning at Fox Sports Wisconsin.com. I'm assuming Doug has people to type in his answers mm -hmm. for. Him. Nice of him to do that for us. Wonder what kind of questions he's getting. A lot of uh, Nigel Morgan questions, Tony Plush questions, I'm sure. You I'm sure there's a few uh, Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder questions as that one is ripped into right. Katze over, and he's got it. Mark Katze runs it down. Hermita retired. Inning over, but Cincinnati gets a two run homer from Brandon Phillips as Doug chats away.
May 27, if you are in 6th through 8th grade and your school is located in the five-county area, you could win as part of Score for Excellence Day presented by Gordon Flesh. Have your parents visit Brewers.com slash score for more information, DA. All right, Telly, thanks as Ryan Braun leads off for Milwaukee, 2-1 Reds. And Braun lifts one of the air, deep right center field. This is way back. Ryan Braun ties it up. Number nine for Braun, the National League leader in home runs. I can't imagine how Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder could get any hotter and both at the same time. I haven't seen that too often. A lot of times you'll see one of them red hot. The other one might not be, but right now, enjoy it, folks. These guys are putting on a show. Taking it to the opposite field. Opposite field home run for Prince. And Ryan Braun taking one deep out of here to right center. And that extends his on base streak to 23 games. Braun matches Robin Yount's franchise record. As Fielder hits one hard out to Votto. And Lee covering for the out. First out of the inning. Also extends Braun's hitting streak to 11 games. And this is a thing of beauty here. That is some kind of power pack swing. Yep, same swing, just lets the ball travel and catches that one right on the front edge of the plate. And no ballpark going to hold that one. Line to line for both of them, Fielder and Braun. And it's been that way the entire month. Here's Barcatze. That one's hit pretty well. Left center. But Hermita will run this one down for out number two. Well, we talked about Braun in our open today. One game away from matching Robin Yount on the franchise record. The amount of hits, that's what's impressive. And when you add the walks, which turns into trips on base. Yeah, look at Robin Yount. I mean, we've been watching firsthand. I was able to, you know, play alongside Robin Yount in the latter part of 1983, right after his MVP season, the World Series year for the Brewers. The Molitor and Yount show, and that lasted for many, many years. And Ryan Braun is now homed in five of his last seven games. Stay hot. And hitting a home run just about every 10 at bats. An incredible home run ratio going for Ryan Braun. Braun with nine homers now, two Lewitsky and Albert Pujols with seven. And a few guys tied at six. Albert's hurt. Got yeah. a hamstring. A mild hamstring strain. The Ball for Pujols. There's a base hit. Betancourt laces one to left field. And a base runner here for Jonathan Lucroy as Betancourt comes up with his first hit of the game. Two two game. The Reds got both of their runs with one swing of the bat. Brandon Phillips, a two run home run. That was after a Joey Votto walk. Cincinnati just two hits, one of those an infield hit by the pitcher Leak. The Brewers now have four hits. Fielder and Braun have homered. Betancourt and Estrada with the base hits, both singles. Mike Leak typically does not give up home runs. That's been the strength of Mike Leak so far this season. He's given up just two home runs this year until tonight. And already two tonight, and we're only in the fourth. Reason for that, you know, we we heard from Dale Swaim about what Mike Leak brings to the ballpark every fifth day. He keeps that sinker down in the strike zone, works the knees, 
And hitters will tell you about Mike Leake. You know, he doesn't throw overpower, overpowering. I mean, he's about 88 to 91, but he hides the ball very well. He throws some three quarters. But what makes him very unique, he throws somewhat sidearm, but is able to get his fingers on top of the baseball, which allows him to get good movement down, both with his fastball and his slider. Not easily recognized by the hitter. With that motion. Garth Ward's first base coach. And we'll see if Ron Renneke has any action on here in a 1 1 count with Lucroy at the plate. Gomez to follow. Two outs in the inning. A run in on a Braun Homer. And that one misses. Two balls and a strike. And if the Brewers had a notion to put a runner in motion here, this would be the time to do it. Yeah, two and one is the best running count. You figure the pitcher wants to throw a strike. Good opportunity for the hitter to protect him if he takes off. He stays put, and Luke Croy takes a strike. Two and two. Brewers have 13 steals this season in game number 23 of the year. 13 stolen bases through the first 22. Two balls, two strikes. Luke Croy takes one just off the plate. Leak was ready to head for the dugout. He thought he had a called strike three. Yeah, had Luke Croy looking away and tried to bust him inside, just missed the edge. Well, now Betancourt will be on the move. And if Lucroy can hit one to the wall, Betancourt a chance to score. There he goes. And Lucroy in the right field. That one is back. Bruce at the track. He's got it for the out. Hit it hard, but Bruce runs it down, and the inning is over. Ryan Braun ties it up from one number eight to another. Cal Ripken Jr. will join us in the booth when we come. Cal Ripken Jr. and back in his heyday with the Baltimore Orioles. And Cal Ripken Jr. is joining us here in the booth 
And we saw a great number eight, and here is a really great number eight. Cal Ripken, Jr., <laughs> what brings you to Milwaukee? Uh, first of all, I was mesmerized by the highlights right there. Uh, Put a little the, something together for in you. In the good old days, uh, Yankee Stadium hitting a home run always feels good. Yeah. Had some hair working. Yeah, absolutely. Look good. Throughout the first pitch today as uh, Hernandez gets drilled. Well, tell us about this Badges for Baseball program. I know your, your father's foundation heavily involved with the Wisconsin Department of Justice and I can't wait to hear what uh, what's going well, on. With I you. just came out uh, just to get some attention. That's all I came out for. <laughs> yeah. No, we started a foundation in my dad's name. Uh, my dad died of lung cancer uh, a little over 10 years ago. And really to, to capture his spirit, it was about using the game of baseball to get in front of kids. And one of the programs in this uh, foundation is a badges for baseball program, which merges law enforcement um, with the kids. Law enforcement needs a, a, an opportunity to go into certain areas and not be seen as the bad guys. So it works for them. The kids uh, have an opportunity to uh, to know someone that cares about them, and our uh, mentorship can start to, 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 to blossom. And it's really, really working out well. We started out very small, very humble, and we could help one or two or three kids that we would. Then all of a sudden now this has created some momentum, and it is it is a crime prevention uh, program, and we're really having good results uh, doing it. So we're, we're in our third year here in the Milwaukee area, and so we were in to celebrate that today. And you are in uh, 18 states around the country. I mean, that's a uh, pretty good... Uh, yeah, the bad news for baseball is in right. 18 states. Right. I think we're in 48 states with the foundation uh, overall. So, uh, again, our little humble beginnings have now has now spread out. And the great beneficiaries uh, are the kids. Right. The kids get to, to benefit. And, uh, and, and law enforcement, the funny part is we teach them a little baseball as part of it, so they trade off the baseball and... Uh, and uh, the, the police officers that are the best are not necessarily the best baseball guys. They're the most enthusiastic about learning baseball themselves. The baseball gets them in, and they don't realize they're actually learning something, right? Absolutely. So then they're sharing their learning at the same time, and, and a nice really uh, rapport uh, starts out. And then, as Dad used to, used to tell us kids, uh, baseball emulates life. And many times he was teaching us about life through baseball. And that's really essentially what we're doing. We're just using baseball as an icebreaker. Is that something your dad was big on? You know, law enforcement, that type of thing, inner city kids? Well, you know, the badges, the program, that, um, that, that came uh, just about by a brainstorming session. We were having good results. Uh, dad really cared about kids. And he really cared about using his influence in baseball to kind of get in front of them. And Dad had a special spot for kids that didn't have uh, dads, too. And right. I think Dad lost his dad when he was uh, very young. And so he would go out. He would do free clinics just to kind of get them interested in the baseball. But he really he talked to them about life and gave them opportunities and choices that they otherwise didn't have. Right. Well, the Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen heavily involved uh, in this program as well, along with the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation. And it's a pleasure to have Cal Ripken Jr. join us here in the booth. And you have... Remain very active after your uh, playing days. A lot of players uh, struggle in the transition. You've done some television with <laughs> colleagues at TBS, but you've also been able to uh, put together programs for kids. Your your little league is uh, is going. Yeah, I have strong. a league named after me that uh, was way back in '99. It was a great compliment. Uh, it's one of those feelings that uh, it's a little eerie at first because most of the time that honor is bestowed upon you when you're not here anymore. <laughs> I thought they might have. And we've, we've dealt with kids. We've built a couple of kids' complexes. We have three minor league teams. Uh, I think the reason I had to stay active when I retired is that I authorized the building of a minor league stadium, and I didn't have a team yet. That would, that's not a good business model to really get into. So the pressure was on me to make that work. And fortunately enough, knock on wood, it works. Yeah. Well, you're working hard in your post-playing career just like you did in your playing career. You're at it every day. Well, the retirement thing, um, you know, I don't know about you. It? Yeah, it's, it's it, overrated. It, uh, you think that uh, you're going to stay in your pajamas and play golf every day and do those sorts of things. But you really want to find something that gives you the same feeling as this game gave you. Yeah. And uh, a sense of accomplishment and those sorts of things. Did that hit somebody? Did he yeah. get out of the way? Bounced up. These that's stadiums. A, that's uh, a scary thing nowadays. These stadiums, I mean, the fans are right on top of the players. So uh, you got to keep your keep your eye on the butt baseball. Drew Stubbs doesn't seem too concerned about yeah. it. Yeah. No, but do you have a, some kind of streak going for your post career activities? I mean, no, there's nothing no. like that. I, I like taking days off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In my post career. Hey, you deserve it. If anybody deserves them. it, right? I didn't get them. I did have a chance to go down and speak to Dusty uh, for a moment. 
I'm looking around for guys that uh, that I knew or familiar faces. Mm -hmm. They're getting fewer and fewer. <laughs> They're getting older, the gray hair, you know, that Abs type of thing. Abs but, losing uh, hair and getting gray. Yeah. But yeah. Dusty's got the same enthusiasm he had as a player and then early as a manager yeah. he, uh, now, so it's fun to see. Now, we, I, I, we have a, a mutual friend, B.J. Serhoff, former oh, yeah. Brewer, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he was an Oriole, and he talks about you all the time. I talk to him on the phone, and he name drops with you all the time. <laughs> Are you that close to B.J., or is he just telling me that? B.J. lives five minutes from my house, <laughs> and I don't want to play golf with him because he's a lot better than me in <laughs> is golf. Is he good? But uh, he's, he's, uh, he's a swimmer dad, and yeah. I'm, I'm following my kids around, and uh, uh, my boy now is in baseball, and he was in basketball. So we're not on the same page all the time, but we just lives over the hill, so it wouldn't take much. I see him periodically, yeah. so, but not nearly as much as I should. So he wasn't lying about being a better golfer than you? No, absolutely not. I mean, you know, BJ, when he gets in, into an obsession, he probably plays nine times a week. Right. If you start to add it all <laughs> just up. Just tell him, hey, I remember when you he played with double headers when you were Bill Shoulders backup. Tell BJ that when he, he'll remember that fondly. I yeah. will. I will drop that line on him. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I remember that. That's a big lie. <laughs> that was a hot platoon. against us. Yeah, you were really hot against us. Certain pitchers. Leak gets a bunt down. Estrada. Who, who on our staff did you like to hit off of? You know, oddly enough, they did a uh, one of those goofy questions that they pop up once in a while. You know, somebody asked me who you felt good against. Yeah, you know, I didn't really want to, you know, say who I. So they popped a grip. Storm Davis was a guy that wow. I did well. I didn't realize it. But then right after that, they reminded me that I was one for 11 off of uh, Walt Terrell with nine strikeouts. Well, that's not one you want to remember. See, they, they, they compliment <laughs> me, and then they beat me down. You know, that's what, the way it works. But who, who, uh, who was a guy that uh, gave you some trouble? You know, the longer you play, you own some guys early, and then they own you. Right. And you can't figure them out. There's adjustments and readjustments that uh, went on. Greg Swindell, when I first came in, and Brett Saberhagen. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, and those guys had really good stuff. And for some reason, I saw them pretty well and uh, hit quite a few home runs off of them. But then they figured me out. And Jack Morris was another in right. the very beginning. I got Jack quite a few times. And then after that first couple of years, he just got me the rest of his career. So. Uh, of the many things that we remember about Cal Ripken, the all-star game home run and all that, that uh, talk about that. In Seattle, my yeah, last one. Right, right. The uh, my last All Star game, I really wasn't the most deserving third baseman, uh, but I got voted in, and uh, desperately, even though I had a chance to go many times, I wanted to go back one more time, and I just wanted to do something good. It was a, it was a shadows. Right. Um, I was hitting eight that day, and I was kind of hoping that Edgar Martinez would make an out so Randy Johnson, I wouldn't have to face Randy. <laughs> and the next uh, guy they brought in was Channel Park, and I uh, hit the first pitch uh, and went out of left center field. Greatest feeling in the world. Uh, um, and I got a chance to celebrate with that those great group of uh, American leaders in the dugout. So fantastic right. experience. Cal, uh, congratulations on all the things that you do uh, post-baseball, and the Badges for Baseball is a great program. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Look Thank forward to seeing you. In Oconto Falls, that's near Green Bay. It's in the Green Bay area, actually. 
If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a 2011 Brewers home game. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. Great to spend a few minutes with Cal Ripken Jr. Here on behalf of Badges for Baseball. Great program that is in place here in Wisconsin and the Wisconsin Department of Justice heavily involved as well. And a great concept and I'm glad it's going well for him. And it was good to spend a few minutes with Cal. Been a big day for us. Doug Melvin, Cal Ripken, who's next? A couple of former Orioles. Right. Doug Melvin and Cal Ripken. The inning was kind of a quick one. I, we had plenty of footage ready from the no hitter game. I don't we, think he wanted to see that actually. We use on John Shelby a great deal. John Shelby <laughs> and Cal Ripken, former teammates. T Bone is the eye in the sky for the Brewers now. There's John Shelby. Talk about guys who play basketball. You know, we're talking about Zach Greinke. John Shelby was uh, telling a story when he and Cal were, were playing in the major leagues together. They played a lot of basketball mm -hmm. during the season. They go out and they play on these, uh, you know, kind of these barnstorming tours in the offseason to raise money, fundraisers. And uh, they, they played all over the place. <laughs> Can you imagine now if uh, somebody like Zach Greinke would injure himself playing basketball? Imagine that would never that. happen, right? Yeah. There's a base hit by Gomez. Clean single to center field to start the fifth inning. Which leads us to our carsuit.com email the booth question. Ralph in the Rapids wants to know what do you guys mean when you say a hitter's count? Well, it's basically a, a, a count where a hitter can pretty much anticipate a fastball. You know, 2 and 0, oh, 3 and 1. You know, even three and two, most pitchers are going to go fastball. That's what uh, Carlos Gomez got to get his base hit up the middle. That's a hitter's count. Estrada hoping to advance Gomez here. Now, a pitcher's count, on the other hand, 0 and 2, 1 and 2. You know, counts where the hitter has to be very defensive. Not sure what he's going to get. A hitter's count is pretty much of a count where you can pretty much say that a pitcher's got to throw a strike here. Do you have anything to add to that, partner? I think you you summed it up beautifully. Expert analysis on the hitter's count. Hitters are always trying to get the count in their favor. Ron Renicky referenced that last night about Dusty Baker's offense. About the fact that they they do work counts, they get themselves into hitters counts a great deal. And when they do, and you're forced to come off the edges of the plate, that's when they can do some damage. Estrada bunts it foul, and it's one and two. And that's when you have to do your damage. You're not going to do much damage on a consistent basis when you're behind in the count, taking too many pitches. The thing that drives hitting coaches crazy when you have a big Hitter up there, he gets himself into a hitter's count. He's working the count to know that he's going to get a good pitch, and he ends up taking it. Two and zero, oh, three and one. Guys taking pitches, you know, almost to excess. And sometimes you can take too many pitches. Estrada will try again, and did he offer at it? No, he didn't. Able to check the bunt attempt. Says Jeff Nelson. Two and two, the count. One of the reasons you like Gomez batting eighth. He delivers a single to start this inning and it doesn't take a. Great bunt even to get him to second with his speed. And he's going to be picked off Gomez got caught looking away from the pitcher. Boy what a huge no no that is. Well when you take that lead and you're off first base you're looking at one thing and that is the pitcher. You can't allow your eyes to daydream and he I don't know what he was looking at. He might have been looking at Eddie Cedar for something or other. I'm not sure what it was. It looked like he was looking in that direction, but he was completely fooled. That's and a pretty quick spin move by Leak. I'm sorry. Estrada takes a ball and you see Gomez didn't see it right away. Obviously not looking at Mike Leak. Man, that one not even close. Out to Renteria. And it's out number two. Back to our AT&T trivia. 
They're talking about World Series MVPs and we want to know who was named most valuable player of the 2010 World Series and yes it was Edgar Renteria at 33 years of age a World Series MVP. Renteria had the big home run for the San Francisco Giants in their win over the Texas Rangers. Of course Renteria had the big hit for the Florida Marlins one of their signature moments in their franchise driving in Craig Council with the World Series winning run. It's always a nice badge of honor when you're a player and you've been around a while and you got a couple of world championships under your belt. And that kind of trumps all the other stuff, you know, 300 batting averages because it's all about winning, right? Win a couple of World Series it means a lot. Delivering in the biggest moments, and Renteria has been there with the Marlins, the Cardinals, and the Giants. That's correct, Council, and those two will be forever linked in the Marlins history. Renteria and Craig Council is weeks. In the right and Bruce. Oh, he cannot make the play. And Weeks never stopped. He's on his way to third. A stand-up triple on a ball that looked like a sure out when it left the bat. Yeah, playing very deep out there in the right was Jay Bruce and got a late break on it. It sounded good off the bat. That's what froze Bruce, I think. A little bit off the end of the bat, but Ricky Weeks running hard all the way out of the batter's box, not taking anything for granted. Ball doesn't get that far away from Jay Bruce. There's one of those instances I think that you're better off playing it safe. You, you, you'd rather give up the single certainly than the triple. And now you got a man in scoring position. An infield hit is going to score a run. Week safe at third, safe and secure. New York life, and a chance for the Brewers to take the lead here. Two gone. Council takes ball one. Two outs, nobody on, and you're in the outfield. You play it safe. You like to make the great catch, but not at the risk of putting a runner in scoring position with two outs. Two balls, no strikes. Now the ball was in the air a long time. Bruce, as Rock mentioned, was deep, did not get a good jump. And the ball just died down in the corner. Give Weeks credit. He was on his horse all the way around. Three balls, no strikes. Pick up Jay Bruce here and notice the angle he takes. Hang time of four seconds. <laughs> Usually those are caught. And a snap throw to third. Ricky back in time. That is strike one to Council. It's kind of surprised Hernandez made an attempt there. Sometimes you can take a strike away from a pitcher in that spot. Yeah, move around like that, jump up, and block the view of the umpire. Council should see. Something to hit here with Ryan Braun on deck. The 3 1. Yeah, a swing and a miss. The definition of a hitter's count right there 3 and 1 with Ryan Braun at the plate. Mike Leak goes with a cutter. A good pitch right on the inside corner. Braun homered in the fourth to tie it. Council hoping to break that tie. The 3 2 pitch. Strike call. Council is wrong up. Lee comes all the way back to strike him out. And the inning ends. The Brewers with two hits in a fifth. A pickoff. And a runner stranded at third. Still 2-2. Two -two.
Four showcases the ultimate in outdoor programming. Every Saturday and Sunday morning experience everything from the pursuit of fish and game to exploring the best weekend destinations. Fox Sports Wisconsin Outdoors presented by Menard Saturday at 6 a.m. Sundays at 8 a.m. Only on Fox Sports Wisconsin. We've had our own version of Fox Sports Wisconsin Outdoors here inside Miller Park. As the Hawk lives on here appeared on Sunday. I haven't seen him lately, but you get the feeling he'll be back. Inning starts with a big shift on for Jay Bruce. Estrada still clipping him away here. Oh, he's pitched well. And even the home run ball he gave up to Phillips, you couldn't classify that as a bad pitch. <laughs> that was almost in the dirt. Yeah, back knee for Phillips on the ground after he made contact. He went down and got a pretty good pitch. And sometimes that happens. You just tip your hat to the guy at the plate. Phillips with a two run home run in the fourth inning. Gave the Reds a temporary lead. Braun tied it in the next half inning with a leadoff home run to deep right center. Brewers are trying to shake that Reds that Reds dominance lately. Little half swing he goes says Tim Cheetah. And Jay Bruce is a strikeout victim. Hey, remember Joey Votto able to hold up on that change up with two strikes but Jay Bruce cannot. So strike three for a stride on the change up. Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin are offering free prostate cancer screenings at Miller Park from 7 a.m. until 1 on May 26th. The first 500 men 40 and older who complete the screening that day get a voucher for free Brewers tickets to a future game. Here is Joey Votto with one away. Votto bounced into a double play in the first inning. Walked and scored. He was on when Phillips went deep in the fourth. Well, it has been quite a ride for Marco Estrada. Not on a major league roster during spring training, not even invited to big league camp. After appearing in the major leagues for the Brewers last year. Estrada was at least five deep on the starting rotation depth chart. The Brewers tried what about three or four guys before Estrada got the opportunity to show what he could do in spring training. None of the other guys were able to do it but Estrada put together two pretty good starts and here he is. Well, the only damage tonight for the Reds check out where this pitch was. Brandon Phillips goes down to a knee golfs one out of here for a two run home run. When you're hot you're hot right. You hit anything. Yeah, Phillips had three hits last night he drove in three runs. A two run homer tonight. Three homers 12 RBIs now for Phillips. He joins Joey Votto for the club high in RBIs. Chris Narvison. Last night's starter took his first loss of the season. Big cut and a miss. Yep, one and those a hitter's count, and Marco Estrada able to throw a slider off the edge. Well, you would figure it's going to be a central division team. You play those teams the most. Slicing into the seats. So Phillips down in the count one and two. Not an easy guy to double up. Only way to turn two on Phillips is if he hits one 
sharply right at an infield. We saw Votto take off with Phillips at the plate his last time up. See if they elect to go back with a changeup. That was the pitch that Phillips hit out his last time up. A well located changeup. Phillips has swung through a couple of sliders. Just got a piece. So you know Estrada lets that pitch go and Open for a strikeout. Knowing he's made a good pitch, but Phillips and Votto have been able to, to hang tough. Votto has been able to take his best changeups. And he has drawn two walks. Ball and two strikes on Brandon Phillips. There's a bouncing ball. Bedencourt backing up. Got to hurry. Weeks the turn in time. Double play. Sharply hit Bettencourt to Weeks to Fielder. Just what Estrada needed. Hitting over. Still a 2 2 game. Brewers coming to back. Lottery reminding you to please play responsibly by Airtran. Go, there's nothing stopping you. And by the Miller Lite Vortex bottle. Taste greatness. Double play turn to end the inning as Marco Estrada retires Brandon Phillips and continues to pitch well. Filling in for the injured Zach Grinky. 2 2 game under the lights of Miller Park. On a Tuesday night. Great to have you with us tonight. It's a good one going. Estrada's given up just two hits. The Brewers have six. And a 2 2 game. Braun has one of those six. He homered in the fourth to tie it up. Opposite field bomb for Ryan Braun. Hit it deep into the reaches of right center. Extended his hitting streak to 11 games. And his consecutive on base streak. So 23 games to start a season. Tying a franchise record. Nine home runs and he's hitting 381. It's been incredible to watch this guy go at it from day one. Well, the Brewers are hoping to put some runs on the board. You got the middle of the order coming up. See where Braun ranks right now in the National League. Look at that on base percentage, huh? Not bad. Half the time, just about, he's been on base. Only Matt Holiday of the Cardinals with a higher on base percentage. Take you back to the fourth inning. Ryan Braun leading off the fourth. Deep into right center. A 400 plus foot blast, and he continues to climb the list. 
Moving uh, closer and closer to the top ten. Most home runs through the first five seasons. At this rate, he might be there at the All Star break. <laughs> Little bouncing ball coming over as Giannis makes a play for the out. Braun retired. Leak has a knack of coming back in account. Even when he falls behind, he's able to pick up his outs, get called strikes to get back into account. Yeah, he can't, he got back and, and got himself out of a big jam when he got great counsel. He fell behind three and oh. Made three very good pitches to get Craig and just ate Ryan up inside with a fastball. Fielder rips one to right, but right at Jay Bruce. Hit it hard. A line drive out for out number two. So Leak has worked through Braun and Fielder here in the sixth. Well, Mike Leak, a 3 0 record coming into play today. And what you notice about his, his line today and the fact that he has been able to get a bunch of called strike threes, he has punched out six. And uh, five of them have been. Called strikes, yep. called strike threes. Six strikeouts has not walked a batter today. A typical Mike Leak night. Didn't walk many. Katze the batter. Only two Brewers had ever faced Mike Leak, and neither one of them in the lineup. Nigel Morgan is on the disabled list, and Will Nieves. Not in the starting lineup tonight. Not much familiarity with this pitcher. Votto to leak and a three up three down inning goes right through the middle of the Brewers order. We go to the seventh all tied at two. Prince Fielder would get the Brewers on the board first with his fourth home run of the season. That came in the second, and after a Joey Votto walk, Brandon Phillips will hit a two-run homer off one knee to give the Reds a 2-1 lead, but that was short-lived because in the bottom half of the inning, Ryan Braun hit his lead-leading ninth home run of the season, and the Brewers and Reds are tied in a good one, B.A., as Marco Estrada starts the top of the seventh inning. Yeah, he has been something else. Estrada, with his first out in this inning, will set a new career high for innings pitched. Estrada working to Renteria to start the seventh inning in a 2 2 game. Only two hits given up. One of them was an infield hit. As you see, Logan Andrusik loosening for the Reds. An infield hit by the pitcher Leak and that two run, one knee home run by Phillips. 
nail the runs tonight courtesy of the home run ball you would expect that from two teams that. Are one and two in the National League and homers. What a lift Estrada has given Milwaukee in the absence of Zach Greinke. Council backhands. And a good throw as fielder keeps a toe on the bag. Renteria retired. His third ground out of the night. Don't forget the Brewers and the Reds wrap it up tomorrow. Our Miller Lite What's on Tap. It's a matinee, not televised tomorrow. You can join us in person here at Miller Park. And then we're back on TV on Fox Sports Wisconsin for the weekend series in Houston. That starts Friday. Sean Markham set to go the opener on Friday. Gallardo tomorrow against Cincinnati. You can understand the urgency tonight. The Brewers dropped the opener last night. And their ace going tomorrow. By the way, if you're just joining us, you saw that shot of Corey Hart. He is active now. He was not supposed to be activated until tomorrow. But uh, Eric Almonte, during batting practice, was hit in the head on a thrown baseball. Didn't see it. And is on the seven day concussion disabled list, the new seven day DL. So they activated Hart. And we might see him get an at bat here. As Estrada strikes out Hermita. Fourth strikeout for Estrada. Our Hotel Gaming text question How recent has the seven day disabled list been around in baseball? Sarah in Germantown wants to know. Right before the season started, it, uh, you know, they started talking about it in the offseason. They put a panel together to Major League Baseball. Roger Kaplinger, the Brewers head athletic trainer, is part of that panel. They put a uh, procedure together to evaluate players. Everybody has a baseline in Major League Baseball. They're all tested in spring training. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Eric Almonte, you know, he was tested by the medical staff here at Miller Park. The baseline test in spring training did not match up with what they saw today, so they called Major League Baseball. And he did qualify for that seven day disabled list. You just can't throw a guy on there. You have to pass a test or go through a battery of tests and then request to Major League Baseball that your player needs to be placed on that seven day DL. So it's not something that's very easily manipulated. You just can't throw anybody on the seven day concussion list. You have to pass a battery of tests, or I should say, fail a battery of tests. Right, and Almonte is the first. To be placed on the new seven day disabled list. It's a it's a great rule because as Doug Melvin was saying the the medical community who is involved in this study and a lot of it came from the NFL and the NHL as uh, Major League Baseball worked out but they found seven days was the way to come back at about the right time. Meanwhile Marco Estrada is putting on a show tonight. Brewers need to get him some runs.
Marco Estrada again here in a spot start. Just a two hitter, but we're tied. They got to get some runs. Well, they certainly got to get some runs, but boy, what a remarkable job Marco has done. You know, he's been using that fastball of his very effectively because everybody's worried about his changeup. He's thrown some pretty good changeups, but he's getting guys out on fastballs. Well, we'll cover that subject and uh, hopefully a Brewer win their first, hopefully, against the Reds here tonight on the 2011 season. All coming up, Brewers Live post game, Brian. All right, Craig, thank you. As Estrada will anxiously watch this bottom of the seventh, Estrada's spot is due up fourth in the inning. Yeah, he would love nothing more than to give up that spot for a chance to plate a run that would give him the lead and a possible win. Corey Hart with a bat in hand. And if that spot comes up here in the seventh inning, you figure Hart would be the one to take it. Casey McGee is out tonight. He is available to pinch hit. Renicky would like not to use him, he said. Out with an injured thumb. He did it on the final out last night, colliding with Joey Votto. And there's Cameron Lowe. Who most certainly will have the eighth in it. In the center field, a base hit. Bettencourt starts the seventh with a single. He is two for three against Mike Leak tonight. Now he hit a bullet in the left, and now he's able to stay back. Now a fastball on the outside corner from Mike Leak. Actually a cutter, my mistake. Stays back nicely, centers on it. Down and through and a line drive into center field. He's been swinging the bat well. He likes it here at Miller Park. Yeah, his batting average here at home is near 400. As you see the numbers on Estrada. Career high seven innings. Just two runs allowed. Sitting in a 2-2 two, two ball game. Bettencourt will raise his batting average tonight. It was at 342 coming in at home. And two for three tonight. So he's enjoying his new digs here at Miller Park. A little more hitter friendly than Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. <laughs> I'll say. Well, the only reason that the Brewers would be asking Luke Croy to drop down a bunt, you know, latter part of the ball game, you know that Ron Renicky will go to a pinch hitter when the pitcher's spot comes up. Early in the game, you wouldn't see it. Got to give a lot of credit to Mike Leak. He's had men on in just about every inning. The only three up, three down innings, the first and the sixth. But he has minimized the damage. Just two solo home runs, Fielder and Braun. Hey, he's not on the base. And the first base umpire, Jeff Nelson, says he's in line with the throw. I understand that, but he's got to be going back to first base. I mean, you can't be jumping off the bag and throw to first like that. You have to be on your way back to first base. Watch him. Check him out. He stopped. I guess that's okay. He wasn't walking actually toward you know, the pitcher's mound when he caught that baseball. Lucroy foul tips one. No balls, two strikes on Lucroy. I guess because basically it's the same thing the Prince always does. He's off the bag. And when he caught the baseball, he was not moving toward. The pitcher's mound. Had he been moving toward the pitcher's mound, they might have called the ball. Mm -hmm. And you can't just stand anywhere. I mean, Votto couldn't play behind the runner and Leak make a throw over there. So that's why that rule is in place. You have to make an attempt at the bag. And that was the ruling. There's a bunt. And Leak is going to go to second base and he gets the out there. Lucroy just safe. Or the athletic Mike Leak. There's a lot of pitchers that would just take the sure out, but he fires a strike to the bag to get Bettencourt. Yeah, Lucroy just hit it too well. well. Leak able to bounce off the mound. Didn't have to go too far away to grab the baseball, but he made a nice throw at his second base. Just hit it too hard a couple of steps off the mound and a very good throw to second. Bettencourt with a pretty good jump. And without hesitating, Leak fires a strike to second base. 
So a bunt attempt fails, and the Brewers have a runner at first with one out now for Carlos Gomez, hitting in the eighth spot in the batting order. You heard that applause for Corey Hart as he walked out of the dugout, preparing to hit next. Now it is in the left. Got jammed a little bit. Hermita makes a catch. Two gone, and here comes Corey Hart's first half bat of the season. For the pitcher, Marco Estrada. Number one, Corey Hart. This situation for your 2011 debut. Hart's been injured, an oblique injury before the first game of spring training has rendered him injured and unavailable until tonight. It's a tough spot for him to be in. He has not had many at bats. He did play in Nashville last night, was 0 for 3. And Corey activated about what a half an hour before the ball game. You have to be activated. You know before the lineups are exchanged at home plate. And a nice nice round of applause by the folks here in Milwaukee. That's got to make Corey feel good. Hard pinch heading for Estrada. And the 0 2 and it's just fouled off. Well, one of the reasons Hart went to the minor leagues is to, to see some pitches, to get some at bats. When he arrived here, even as late as our pregame interview with him on Brewers Live, he was not preparing to play. The 0 2 and Hart and broken bat. Phillips makes the play. Or rather, Renteria to Phillips, and the inning is over. Still tied at two as we go to the eighth. Showers possible anytime. Cloudy skies. First pitch temperature on the cool side, only around 49. All right, Ava, thank you. And the roof will be closed tomorrow for sure, as we're still into tough weather in the Midwest. 
Well, Marco Estrada, he is going to leave this game without a decision. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game, though, seven strong for Estrada, career high. He strikes out five, and he was very impressive tonight. Yeah, he established his fastball first time through. He actually hit 95 miles an hour a couple of times. And in my mind, I think the big difference for him tonight, the slider. That slider was a very good pitch for him. It was late breaking. He didn't make any mistakes with it. And, of course, he had... A good change up as well. So a tremendous start for Marco Estrada once again. And the bullpen will take over now. Cameron Lowe is first up. Lowe has the eighth in a 2 2 game, just two hits allowed for Estrada. An infield single and that two run home run by Brandon Phillips. That's been it for the Reds. Lowe deal strike one to Paul Yanish. Yanish is 0 for 2 tonight. Making his first start of the season at third base. As Dusty Baker searches for some continuity with the injured Scott Rowland unavailable. Well, he certainly got the arm to be able to patrol third base. Question is, is he going to be able to hit enough to justify putting him over there? That's normally an offensive position. The corner infield and quarter outfielders. You got to get some run production. That's why they're going to miss Scott Rowland so much. I think defensively he'll be okay if that's the guy that they're leaning on. Baker has him in the eighth spot tonight. Where he has typically hit for Cincinnati. And Lowe drills him. Well, not a good start here as he hits Paul Yanish with a two strike pitch. And that is going to allow Leak to stay in this game. Yeah, right in the gluteus maximus. No chance to get out of the way of that pitch. That's not even close. Well, it gives the Reds the option to send their pitcher back up to the plate. And a chance for Leak to bunt the runner over. Leak has one of the two hits for Cincinnati. Reached on an infield hit in the third inning. A little slow roller, a swinging bunt over to third base. Well, this is one area the Brewers did not execute in the seventh. Lucroy was unable to get Betancourt to second base. After a leadoff single by the Brewer shortstop. It's going to be tough for Leeds to be able to drop that bunt down successfully with the way the corner infielders are charging. They're crashing quickly. Giannis has decent speed, so Prince has to stay put long enough to keep him close. He'll just steal second base. Leak squares early, and the bunt is foul. A ball and two strikes. A lot of teams will allow their pitchers, if the corner infielders are crashing in, like the Brewers are here, they'll allow him the flexibility to pull it back and swing away. I'm not sure if the Reds do or not. The old butcher boy play. But the Brewers are certainly heads up for the lead out. And now he swings away and down he goes on strikes. There it was. The old fate bun and slash and a good pitch by Cameron Lowe. Watch this ball sink as it gets to leak. There's no chance. I mean, that's a uh, nasty sinker. You could even see it in the reaction of Mike Leak as if to say, where did that ball go? <laughs> Mitch Stetter, the lefty, preparing for Jay Bruce. It's the kind of movement that Cameron Lowe can get when he stands tall and gets on top of that baseball. 
Here is Drew Stubbs 2 2 game in the eighth a tight one here at Miller Park. The Reds having won four consecutive games against Milwaukee this year. Swept the opening series of the season. And then winning last night 9 5. I'll tell you how good the starting pitching has been tonight. There has only been one at bat by both teams combined with a runner in scoring position tonight. That was that council at bat after the week's triple with two outs. It's been some good pitching tonight. And Marco Estrada going toe to toe with Mike Leak. I think everybody's excited to get Zach Greinke back. I mean, he's the ace. He's a former Cy Young Award winner. But how much better statistically could he possibly be than Marco Estrada? Estrada's ERA drops to 3.0 after his outing tonight. With seven innings of two hit, two run baseball. Well, it's nice to have that depth and. You never know how things are going to work out. It's going to be a while. You know, Greinke's going to make another rehab assignment. So you're looking about 10 days. He's going to throw again on Friday, and then his next start will be for the Brewers. So a lot, a lot of things can happen between now and then. But make no mistake, it's going to be nice to get Zach Greinke out on the mound. I think over the course of the long haul, the long season. I think it's going to make a big difference. Well, and the Brewers certainly needed that depth in the first month of the season. And Marco Estrada is a big part of that. Now you get a former Cy Young Award winner back in 10 days. You get Corey Hart back, a two time All Star. Saito's coming back. He saved 39 games in a season. Oh, close pitch. Just missed on the inner half. I'm not sure how you take this pitch with two strikes. Good eye at the plate, though. A little bit low in off the plate. Stubbs with home run power. He's tough to double up as well. Fast runner. The 2 2, and in there again. Missed again. Stubbs not biting. Three balls, two strikes. We'll see if Dusty Baker puts Yanish in motion here. Remember, Stubbs strikes out a ton. Has about one strikeout per game on average this year, and he has two K's tonight. And down he goes. Giannis stays put. Low picks up the strikeout. Well, he found himself did Stubbs in a somewhat of a hitter's count. He knew the fastball was coming. This time it was away and not in, and he swings and misses. He had different look, different location. It was still low, but he went after that one. Well, Stetter has been loosening in the bullpen. Low will stay to face Jay Bruce here. 2 2 game, top of the eighth. And two men are out for Cincinnati. Back to back strikeouts for Cameron Lowe. More and more, you're starting to see lineups being put together with a power threat in the two hole. That used to never be the case in the second spot in the batting order, especially in the National League. You'd have a guy who could get bunts down, advanced leadoff hitters. But Dusty Baker, a lot like Ron Renicky in that philosophy. There's a strike. Well, it makes sense. You get a guy that can hit some home runs in front of what is normally in the number three spot your best all around hitter. So you figure that guy. The guy in the two hole is going to get some pretty good pitches to hit. You don't want to be pitching around Jay Bruce and have Joey Votto come up with men on base. Two balls and a strike. Big pitch coming as Bruce takes ball three. Now the first to do it consistently was probably Tony La Russa in his American League days with the White Sox. He used to put Harold Baines in that two hole. Power threat, the 3 1. Full count. 
You remember when the Cardinals were going strong and a perennial playoff team. They had pool holes in the three hole and Ryan Ludwig batting second. Yeah. And Ludwig, I think maybe more than anybody, enjoyed that two hole in front of pool holes. Put up some big years for the Cardinals. Full count, two outs. Giannis takes off, and Bruce bounces one into the shift right two weeks. Inning over. Cameron Lowe, a scoreless eighth. And here we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Cameron Lowe keeps it at a 2 2 game. The top of the batting order coming up. Milwaukee what a game tonight and it's going to come right down to the end Logan on is on the mound as Dusty Baker makes a quick trip bring it on his bullpen here Mike Leak goes seven innings just two runs allowed no walks six strikeouts he and Marco Estrada pitching very good games tonight. Neither one will factor in the decision. Yeah, great numbers for Andrusik. It's a very good bullpen for Dusty Baker. 13th appearance for the tall right hander. A, an ERA under one. A 174 opponent batting average. He threw two thirds of an inning last night of scoreless baseball and only took four pitches. Ricky Weeks will lead off at the play presented by Wendy's. See what he has done. He tripled his last time up. Didn't hit it all that hard, but he put it in the right spot down in the right field corner. Was stranded at third base. Brewers need a big hit. This game is going to be won in the final at bat, regardless, by someone. And Milwaukee would love to return the favor. To Cincinnati. Weeks wrestles one in the left center field. That is going to get over the head. And it's gone. Ricky Weeks. Late life. And the Brewers take the lead. Three to two. Boy, how about that rocket from Ricky Weeks? I thought that ball was going to be in the gap, but then I thought it might hit the wall. And then I'll tell you, that ball just kept carrying. Nice short stroke for Ricky Weeks. That ball just jumped off his bat. A rocket for Rick Ricky. It just kept going. It kept rising as it got out to right or left center. And the Brewers with a three to two lead. Boy, that ball was smoked. Something else, huh? Goodness. I mean, there aren't many who can. Hit it on that kind of line and have enough carry to get it out of here. That was impressive. And not too many can hit the ball any harder than Ricky Weeks when he squares up on one. Wow. 
So the big boys are hitting the home runs tonight. Three home runs in this game. All solo shots. Fielder in the second. Braun the game tire in the fourth. And Weeks puts him ahead here in the eighth. Home run number six for Ricky Weeks. You know, sometimes hitters surprise they surprise even themselves at times. I don't think Ricky thought off the bat that that was a home run. That ball just kept going didn't come down until it got into that Brewers bullpen. Got it had some backspin on it just kept going. Well, he had to hang time on his triple four seconds. That's right. What do you think the hang time on that one was? Not much. Two. That was a good call right there. <laughs> yeah, weeks in the fifth inning, he he got one a little bit off the end of the bat. It kind of died. It was a just a really just a fly ball in the medium right field, but it was toward the line, and Bruce was very deep, and he could not run it down. Ricky never stopped, never slowed down. Ended up at third with a triple. He found the barrel that time, didn't he? Council big bouncer out to Brandon Phillips. One gone here in the eighth. <laughs> Do you see Brandon Phillips in second? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the kind of thing that drives yeah. the opposition mad. Now what he does is you know, he'll double clutch and make you run all the way and then get you by a step. Stands there and sizes you up as you taunt you to <laughs> make your way to first. <laughs> Here's Braun now. Shatters his bat. Ranging over is Renteria. And he just gets him for the out. That bat almost hit Logan Andrusik. Two outs. That, that heavy sinker, that's the same pitch that got Ryan his last time up. And pouring in on his hands and able to get him just by a step at first base. So a fielder coming up on Drusek will be lifted. And Dusty Baker is going to play matchup here. And here comes the flamethrower, a Roldis Chapman. 3 2 Milwaukee. Ricky Weeks with a solo home run to start the eighth. And now Prince Fielder will step in. Three solo home runs tonight. 16 of the 27 this year have been of the solo variety. Fielder Braun and Weeks. 
And it's 3 2. And we're going to get a good look at Aroldis Chapman. And his 105 mile an hour fastball. So far tonight, Fielder in the second inning. That was his fourth of the year. Gave the Brewers a 1 0 lead. Ryan Braun tied the game in the bottom of the fourth. His ninth, his National League leading ninth home run. And then just a moment ago, Ricky Weeks, number six, and a 3 2 Milwaukee lead. Whistled one into that Brewers bullpen. And now it's Fielder. This is the kind of matchup you pay to see right here, huh? Yeah, Prince has been outstanding against left handed pitching so far this year. 11 for 28. A batting average just a bit under 400. And Rolas Chapman, as you mentioned, he can throw at 100 plus. He's, he's not allowed a run, an earned run in nine and two thirds innings. 99 with the first fastball fielder barking at Tim Cheetah. Chapman is uh, in waiting for the closers role in Cincinnati. Our gun had a hundred on that last pitch and yes he has a slider and that's the difference maker for Chapman. Yep, the arm angle makes it very tough against left handed batters. Well, Chapman splits. He's actually better against right handed hitters than he is against lefties. You see, Fielder splits this year. This is no ordinary left hander on the mound. And a swing and a miss. Back to back sliders for the hard thrower. A roll to Chapman. We go to the ninth. Here comes the axe man. Weren't able to watch our broadcast. Our Home Depot doing more on defense. The double somersault from Carlos Gomez. Got everybody talking today. And a highlight scene all around the country last night. Carlos Gomez. That's why you have to keep your eyes on at all times. A big crowd tonight. 37,062. And we head to the ninth inning. John Axford. A chance at a save. And you know he would love to exercise a big demon that occurred on opening day against Cincinnati when he blew a save. The Reds came back. And if Axford is going to take it to the finish line here to tonight, he's going to earn it. Votto, Phillips, and Renteria. First three up against Axford. Rocky comes into this game tonight against Cincinnati in pretty good form. Yeah, he's been throwing the baseball pretty well. I mean the key to his success as we talk about all the time is his ability to throw that curveball for a strike. He's always got the velocity. But when he can throw that curveball or slider over in fastball counts, that's when he's really good. Big cut by Votto. There's the curveball. That's the difference maker for John Axford.
second year closer against the reigning MVP. per hour as the Axeman goes with the heat for out number one. Uh, that's just textbook right there. Get ahead. Go with the curveball and then blow him away upstairs. Yeah, right on the outside corner. Then he comes with the curveball. This is the big pitch for Axford. If you throw that for strikes, that makes that pitch right there very effective. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, Mr. Votto. Even looks fast at Exmo. Brandon Phillips. Brewers by a run in the ninth. Phillips popped a two run home run in the fourth off Marco Estrada on a good pitch, actually. Looked like it was headed for the dirt, even. Phillips, after contact, was on one knee. So strong, so quick, able to rip one out of here to left. One of only two hits tonight for the Reds. A slider and that miss. Two balls, no strikes on Brandon Phillips. Now we talk about fastball counts. This is the definition of a of a hitter's count right here. Two and zero. Oh. And be careful. Three and zero. Oh. Ron Renneke, as Axford struggled in the early going, continued to say his stuff's good. His stuff's good. Once he finds his command, that release point. He felt like he'd be back to where he was last year. That was a good heater. I'd be careful throwing that pitch again. 3-0. and oh, And Phillips taking. And he won't be taking now. Axford coming off save number four against Houston on Sunday. The 3 1, and it's popped up. Shallow right. Katze coming in. He wants it. Two outs. Now he threw it again, and Brandon Phillips got under it. Back to back fastballs right down the middle. Edgar Renteria, the final piece to the puzzle for Axford. Three two Milwaukee. A Ricky Weeks home run has the Brewers in the lead here tonight. All four of Axford's saves here. At Miller Park. A chance for number five tonight. Ball and a strike. At this point, our Menards player of the game is Ricky Weeks. A triple and a home run in his final two at bats. One ball, one strike on Renteria. And in front, big curveball from Axford. One and two to count. Fastball, then back to back sliders to Renteria, and two very well located sliders away from him. You want to be hanging that pitch middle in. Those are the ones that get hit out of the ballpark. And remember, Renteria had the big home run in the World Series for the Giants last year. One ball, two strikes, and a little flare. Gomez coming in. Right there, that's your ball game. The Milwaukee Brewers win a thriller tonight.
as John Axford picks up his fifth save. Retires the Reds in order. And a 3-2 final score. Much more still to come on this game. Craig Deshaun, what do you have coming up for us on Brewers Live? Well, we'll take a closer look at the Brewers' first win of the year against Cincinnati. Good for the Brewers to be back 1-1 in this series here at home. And it's a solo job. All solo home runs do the job for the Brewers tonight. Brewers Live is next.